Hey everybody, what's going on? KSA Chris with the Real Estate Blitz, hanging out with my friend Mike here. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, well, I'm not going to go into it. There, yeah. So you missed you missed the first one. We actually had to stop this because we were making too many jokes and having way too much. We talked about the head. Yeah, the head was too big in the camera. It was he, so we were talking about before we got on uh, people's feelings, their their insecurities, and I was saying, you know, I'm an extremely thin person. Mm -hmm. Some people like to call us skinny. It's offensive. You should not call people skinny. He was talking about his head because when we were saying, Mike, you're, you know, go, so talk, you said, Mike, Buzz. Solar Buzz Betancourt. Yep. Solar Buzz Betancourt, but because it's Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. And yeah, so it was kind of fun. So I'm at Starbucks um, yesterday. Right. And sorry, it wasn't Starbucks, Chick fil A. Gotta take it back, Chick fil A. <laughs> They're really, really nice Chick fil A, right? Um, at Chick fil A, and they take my order, and the kids are running around doing, doing their thing. And takes my order and he asks me what my name is. And I was like, Buzz. And he's like, Buzz. Yeah, like Buzz Lightyear. And he looks down and he starts laughing. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, it's okay. I look like Buzz Lightyear. And he's like, no, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. He thought it was offensive. He thought it was offensive. And I'm like, no, I really do look Why like Buzz Lightyear. Why is everybody so easily yeah. offended now? That's um, funny. Yeah, young guy. And every really, good really story funny. starts off with I was at Chick Fil A. Just, yes. Just so you love Chick Fil A. I, you know, there I was. Obviously. There I was Saturday night hanging out at Chick Fil A, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> kids every, love Chick Fil A. Every good story. That's actually how I met my wife. We were we were hanging out at Chick Fil A. Um, okay. Yeah, I was sitting there uh, minding my own business, having a Chick Fil A sandwich, mm -hmm. and uh, I, it was good good advertising. I saw the cow. He says, "Yo, drink eat more chicken." I was mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, I'll go there." And then I saw her from across the room while I was, and she had a little bit of uh, like mayonnaise. Coming down her lip, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that is the most beautiful one." That's not true. I actually met her in Iraq. There you go. Um, no yeah. Chick Fil A there. Sound good though. There might now. I don't know. I haven't been to Iraq in a long time. You never it know. Could be. Anyways, so we're way off topic. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to be talking about solar. So uh, Mike here. I've been. So I just dropped my pen. I'm a fidgeter. And we, I've been watching him on uh, social media for quite a while, and it's it's really cool to see what he's doing. And also, one of our clients has solar at his house uh, with Mike as well. So it was one of those things when I started talking, of, thinking about wanting to do something on solar. And I just I think it's important that somebody talks about solar because there's there's a ton of myths that are out there as far as what's right, what's wrong, what you can do, what you can't do. And unfortunately, even last night when I was doing some research, there really isn't a ton of content unless it's just. If you're pitch sensitive, like I am, I start seeing this content and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just a lead funnel. I'm not getting anything right. that's worth reading that's actually educating me. Mm -hmm. So I figured I would do something, have somebody that I think is an expert. Because right. you work you work all through San Diego, right? Correct. Yeah. You work through South Riverside? Uh, up to Riverside, yes. Up to Riverside. So pretty much everywhere that we're in, and I know you physically live here in Fallbrook as well. Correct. I'm here. So it's just, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. It's right around the corner from us mm -hmm. to have somebody come over and talk about some of these myths. So right, right now. What do you see as the biggest myth that if you had to mm -hmm. debunk something? Because I, I deeply believe a lot of people that get solar or are researching solar, they just don't know. What right, would be the exactly. number one myth that you see as like, this is wrong? Biggest myth by far that I experience, um, especially on social media, some of the groups that we're part of, like Friends of Fallbrook and uh, Temecula Talk, mm -hmm. you know, those, yeah, those, like type, those, those type of groups. Um, the second someone starts talking about solar or asking for solar recommendations, don't do a lease. That's always the first one. Right. right. Don't do a lease. Leases are, are bad. That is that is very 1980s. I agree. Information, right? The, but this yeah. is what, so prior to That's us a, sitting down, yeah, it's a huge myth. Prior to us sitting down, we were talking about this. The, the solar industry, if you look at it from a standpoint of uh, um, years, Less than a decade, really over the last, you had mentioned, maybe five, six years, right. the solar business has turned into a multi-billion dollar industry. Correct. One right. of the big reasons why is the lease opportunities. Solar used to be one of those things, if, I don't know if you guys remember, but I remember. Solar used to be if you had a lot of money, if you were a wealthier Correct. person. It, it's sort of like cell phones. This thing. So for all, us older people, you remember when they first came out with this? Actually, they had the car cell phones. Right. And it was like, oh, if you're really rich, you can have this phone in your car. And then it came down to this big honking, like backpack looking thing. And, and you're like, oh, what's up? You know, I got this. Brick phone? Yeah, the brick phone, yeah. right? Yeah. Now the average person just, and, and, and so if you don't like solar leases and the concept and idea that it allows the average person to actually maximize their opportunity, do you all go out and buy these every year in cash? No. I think not. Okay. okay. I, that's great. That's actually a great example, a great analogy I never used. I have the six plus myself, mm -hmm. and um, 
you know, we just rolled it into the You roll it into right? the payments. I'm it's a gonna... lease. It gives you an opportunity and you can build yeah. into something. It makes the business profitable that's leasing out the, the product. Mm -hmm. And it, it gives the average person the opportunity to have that product and use it. Right. So it, I, I personally lease solar. Um, I, I've done that on three different homes now that I personally own. Never seen an issue with it. Uh, I personally like it. So I think that... The, okay. yeah. yeah, I mean, that's yeah, just me. That. Yeah, yeah I, I've, I've always leased solar. And I think this is where I think a lot of people get challenged over the myth, which is leasing is bad. Right. My opinion, I could be, but he's a solar expert, so if I'm wrong, he's going to tell me I'm 100% wrong. Yeah, when somebody... What's that? In a nice way. In a, in a nice way. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I think when people start talking about leasing it, they, they go into, well, you know, you're going to be stuck with it forever. Uh, you're, you're, it, you can't sell your house. Now, here's the thing. I am a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. We have a very good business here. So I know the truth on this. Well, if you do it, then you can't really sell your house. The solar doesn't do this and that and the other. And, and I think that's what actually stops people from engaging with solar. So I think in order to talk about that, let's back up for a second. What are the benefits of getting solar. Oh my goodness, the benefits are, um, first off, I had the opportunity to drive, because I've only been in California for four years, we moved out here from New England. From New Boston, England? From Boston. Pats fan? Uh, no, unfortunately I'm not a Pats fan, Yeah, I'm a Miami Dolphins how can, fan. How, I know, I know. How does that work? My family hates me. Sense. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. But. Um, uh, Dan I, I stop I'm this. an '80s kid, Dan Marino. I, I, yeah, look, I love Dan Marino as well, and I'm not going to make yeah. this a football topic. But <laughs> I, I, look, there's certain there's certain football teams. If you're from there, mm -hmm. it, you know, if you if you, if you grew up in Dallas, you, you have can't to say you're not a Dallas. You have fan. to remember the Pats were really really bad in the '80s. They were horrible. Yeah, they were. So horrible. was Dallas. Yes, yeah, so they were horrific. Huh? So, but what do I know? I'm the son of immigrants. Just I the guy. barely knew barely knew how to play football when I was a kid. So. Um, I think you would have been a good well, football player. I would have been, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, what, what were we talking about? Benefits of solar. Benefits, benefits. Keep up. So we're in, um, <laughs> we're obviously here in Fallbrook. We're in San Diego County. Uh, we're with SDG&E, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their territory. The highest electric rates in the nation. Um, I think those, they're crooks. In I the couldn't continental find anything on that United either. States, they have the highest rates in the country. Um, um, the only... Uh, in Hawaii, they're actually uh, the utility there is higher than SDG and E. Really, but in the continental US, well, Hawaii makes sense. Almost everything is going to be double over there. Correct. Yeah. But exactly. it, it, my my biggest issue is SDG and E. In my in my opinion, they might as well be on racketeering charges. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we're stuck. If you go to almost any other state, they have multiple companies that they can choose to receive power from mm -hmm. off of the power grid. It's no different. So so you guys understand. It's sort of like the internet. On using the internet, right? Every time you type in something to go out somewhere, it goes across what's called the transit AS. There's these giant systems all over the world. That's the cloud, right? That it's just information that's passing through these transit ASs. And what, however you're choosing to tap into it, I'm gonna to choose to use at and I'm mm -hmm. going to choose to use Time Warner. I'm gonna, however you choose to use is your choice. Power companies are actually like that all over the country. And, and, and basically, the, the power grid itself is just an open grid where these big companies actually pay into the use and transfer of that energy. And then people can choose how they want to get their service. No different than AT&T as far as your cell phone service, Sprint, or anything else. Except for in San Diego, we're stuck with that sdg and &E. It is a 100% pure not monopoly. And in my opinion, the solar industry is just... It's putting it to work. My biggest issue with that, and I know we're get going a little off topic, we'll come back to it. My biggest issue with the monopoly that they've created, and even though solar, it's a free market, should be a free market, it's not. Right. Solar is able to have a huge impact, but SDG&E still gets a say. Right. When you they, start submitting your do. permits and everything else, as far as how big your, you know, how big of a solar panel grid, right. etc., they get a say on whether they're going to approve it or not approve it. So mm -hmm. they're still monopolizing. Correct. In, in a way, but going back to the benefits for a second, um, with uh, with going solar, almost every single one of my clients has been able to cut their bill in half mm -hmm. uh, with uh, in comparison to SDG and E. Absolutely. And um, I've never asked anybody for any money down, so it's a zero down product. Um, you, you, you're basically switching utility providers, if, right. if you if you would, right? Um, I represent SunPower, which they make the most efficient panels in the market. Um, in my opinion, the best product that's available out there today is SunPower, and uh, and they're able to switch over at no cost to a different provider 
you control your energy costs just like you do now with your right. lease, right? I love it. You control your costs. You know exactly what your bill is going to be next month. There are no surprises. You can run the AC a little bit more and all mm. that. So there's all sorts of different benefits to it. Um, but going back to my original story, I just moved out here four years ago. We got distracted with the Patriot stuff. Um, <laughs> and I just went out to L.A. Um, to pick up uh, uh, a family member at the airport at LAX. And in between, we... We were driving through like East LA and right. LA area, and the smog was so bad. So you want to benefit of solar? Just go to East LA, get out of your car, take a couple deep breaths, and uh, there's another benefit of solar right. know, for sure. In, in my opinion, it is. It's green energy. Um, I think it, there's there, we are still lacking and behind as a nation in green energy. I mm -hmm. think solar is fantastic. Um, I know for me, what I noticed is by the solar panels eating up the whole side of my roof where mm -hmm. the sun is, my house is actually cooler. Interesting. Uh, throughout yeah. the summer, yeah, it's actually cooler. I thought it was kind of cool. It's another layer. Yeah, and um, and it's it's raised, so it right. actually creates yeah, kinda, exactly. you know that separate space. It's like almost like an insulation type effect. It actually adds value to your home, um, depending on how you set up your solar. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you know, so I want to talk about go, going back to the myths. One of the myths was leasing. Right. I want to talk about the hero loan. Oh, you, yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. let's talk about the hero loan. What do you think? Of, uh, first off, tell people what the hero loan is, mm -hmm. positives, yep. negatives of the hero loan. Hero loan uh, is a good product if you're going to be in your home for a long term. Right. Um, hero is... A, 10 years, 20 is, years, 30 years? Uh, I, I would look at least somewhere 15 is kind of like the ballpark. Okay. Right, right, right in there. Some would say 12. I'm, I'm looking more towards 15. Okay. So hero is a government financing option. Um, it's a popular way that people go solar. Um, honestly, I don't use Hero a ton. I've done a handful of deals using Hero. I'm not a big fan of Hero. Um, I, I'm not honest, either. Yeah. As a real estate agent um, that manages a real estate team, every time we've dealt with a Hero loan, so people, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to stay in my home forever. Right. The truth is, most people, when you look at not here. whether it's the, not here, the appreciation value of their home, step ups, your life changes. I mean, so let's say I'm going to buy my home and live in it forever. I'm in my 30s. The fact is, let's say you're 30. When you hit 40, you're di you're a different person. Right. You have different needs, different requirements, maybe a different number of kids, number mm -hmm. of animals, whatever it is. You're making a different type of an income. Your home's appreciated over the last 10 years, and you want to move. You want to you want to step up or right. do something else. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say you're later in life and you're looking to eventually potentially downsides, uh, downsize. Somebody got sick, uh, you know, husband, wife needs to go into a facility for care, and now you have the hero loan. And, and I'm right. telling you, as a real estate agent, it is a nightmare to deal with. It, it's doable, you know. It's, there's, there's it's funny to it. me because when people say don't do leases, I almost think they mean don't do hero. I agree with that. Right? Don't do hero loans if you don't have to. Leases, it, I'm a fan. Exactly, yeah. Um, so I actually last year had a had a realtor friend of mine uh, who lives in Lake Rancho Viejo right mm -hmm. here in Fallbrook, um, and uh, he was selling his home, and the realtor that was helping facilitate the buyer um, did wasn't familiar with the lease or PPA right. option, right? Um, so his idea of solar, and he has solar in his home, obviously he's one of my clients, um, was selling the house, and so they, it was a simple transfer right. from one to the other, right? right? Well, the realtor had, and this part amazed me, that the realtor didn't know. Um, right. He actually became, that other realtor became my client as well, who it also is so lives common. there. Because he had no idea. His, right. his experience with solar was hero. Right. And I was like, no, this is not hero. Hold Hero's not base. good. Right. You, don't, you definitely want to stay away from hero if you ever plan on selling. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a small chance, and this is what I always tell, there's a possibility, there's a remote chance you're going to be selling your home in the next 15 years, hero's just... Heroes not the way. Hero, yeah. I agree 100. percent Anytime the government gets involved, they're going to screw it up. Always. And that's exactly what's happened with that program. Yeah, agreed. Um, I, I'm a fan of, of leasing. So, mm -hmm. what other myths? And we'll probably let's hit one more because we're we're 14 minutes deep. Okay. What other myth is um, something that's out there that you've heard? That's of? That's probably the biggest <laughs> one. The other myth is um, is uh, the technology changing rapidly. You know, mm -hmm. it's like a lot of people use the iPhone example. Well, if I had an iPhone four, you right. Know, um, and now the iPhone 7 came out, and I'm stuck with the iPhone 4 on my roof, right? Um, the, in the solar industry, um, SunPower, for example, they've been around for 30 years, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons I like them. Um, they're not a company that's been around for five or six years. Right. Uh, so they've been around long term, almost as long as me. And um, the technology with solar panels really hasn't changed much in the last 10 years. <laughs> Um, inverters have changed quite a bit, right. but efficiency hasn't changed right. that much. I mean, it's, I, I think it's my new percentage. It, you know, and again, I'm not an I'm not an expert in solar. Mm -hmm. and I think what what kind of catches me, I've heard that as well. Right. 
when I look at power, power use, power consumption, Correct. power adjustments, when I put on a solar panel, let's say today, yep. is solar, and I'm in a 20 year lease, I'm right. throw out whatever yeah. number, just throw out a number, sure. 20 year lease. I know right now there's X amount of energy that I'm going to receive from my solar panels. Correct. And the, they're going to show me stats over X amount of time, the 20 mm -hmm. years, how that's going to adjust on the actual energy that it's able to produce. Right. And my thing is, if I decide to wait for the next variation of technology, am I winning or losing? So to me, Correct. from my experience, yep. if I put it on today, it's, it's, it's no different than any other commodity. Mm -hmm. I know fuel prices, even though they dumped right now, and, and this is definitely not the place to talk about that. Right. They're always going to rise. They're always going to get more expensive over time. Just like buying a home. If I buy a home today for twenty thousand, <coughs> I got a house like that, that right now that we just listed. We, you know, they originally bought it for twenty thousand. It's worth a couple hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. right now. It's you know, and some people buy it for three hundred thousand. I bought my first house here in Fall Brook for two fifty. It was worth four twenty five two years later. It's always going to increase. It's always going to increase. The cost of power, especially in a monopoly, is always going to increase. Right. So if if I know historically, that's accurate. Yeah. Right. So could it be that I pick up new panels in the future that produce more? Maybe. Sure. Yeah. But, but what we're talking about, just to put that into perspective, imagine you have twenty panels on your roof, right? You have twenty solar panels, and a new panel comes out that gets, you know, uh, two percent more efficiency, right? right? Whatever that is. That could probably mean instead of 20 panels, your new system that you could buy, you could probably end up with 18 or 19 panels. Right. Is that really going to change that for you, right? Probably I think it's not. only going to yeah. it's only going to ch it change the way people perceive it with their eyes. But right, exactly. for me personally, what I care about is the production. Mm -hmm. it, and I'm not this I love solar, I love this industry, but I'm, I'm not this type of I'm not the salesperson that's come in and say solar is awesome, it's going to revolute it, it, Yes, it's a great product. It's unbelievable. But I don't think solar is an a unbelievable investment compared to other investments that are out there mm -hmm. in your portfolio, in your 401k, or your IRA, or your mutual funds. You could be investing money somewhere else and making more of a return on that. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about solar, the reason people go solar is because the electricity rates are outrageously high in, in Southern California. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. It has... It's not the panels. It's not the technology, That's and we right. can get all into the into the details if you'd like. And why not? At the end, now? but at the end of the day, you're locking in your electricity mm -hmm. rate at this fixed price. Right. You know. That's it's what kind, I like. Kind of like this analogy that uh, old an old uh, old mentor of mine once said. He's like, imagine if I came to you. Um, I started driving in 1996, 1997, like around there, and I remember gas prices were 89 cents a gallon. Mm -hmm. This is back in Massachusetts. Imagine if I had come to you at that point when you were filling up your pump and said, Hey, son, in 20 years, gas is going to be $4 a gallon. Right. I'll sell you this gas card right now for you know, for a dollar a gallon, uh, and I'm going to lock in that rate for the next 20 years. Right. Would you buy it? Yes. No. Well, at the then. time, at I wouldn't time, because no. I'm like, no, it's 89 cents a gallon. Yeah, at the time. Why no. would I do that, right? Um, that's That analogy can be used today with SDG and E. 100%. And you start saving money today. Right. You're not paying more to go solar. You're actually paying less to go solar. Right. Um, because SDG and E, tier two is now 40 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, this summer, it's going to be 42 cents a kilowatt hour. I remember when I moved here four years ago saying, it won't be long before it's 50 cents a kilowatt hour, and that sounded crazy because the highest tier was at 29 cents. Right. Now we're at 40, and 42 is it's, coming it's in insane. a few months. Absolutely insane. And with solar, even the worst solar out there, you're ending up at 17, 18 cents, right? right? 40 cents, 18 cents, you literally cut your bill in half. Right, night so. day. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're uh, almost much to a no -brainer. <laughs> We're almost to the 20 minute mark. So real quick, how can people find you if they want to sit down, learn, especially real yeah, estate absolutely. agents. A lot of real estate agents listen. Um, if you want to reach out to to, uh, to Chris, um, you can reach out to myself, 978-866-0332 is my phone number. Um, you can reach me at, at Facebook at Mike Solar Buzz Betancourt. Um, on Twitter, the Solar Buzz. Uh, Instagram, the Solar Buzz, or the Solar Buzz. Or, I never know if I'm saying that right. The, yeah, or the, the. the it's, yeah, I think it's it's like, as long as you're not saying the. Middle, the. So. It's a T H E Solar Buzz because I like Buzz Lightyear. So, um, um, and yeah, that's probably the best way. To right on. It, yeah. And you all know how to find me, uh, the Real Estate Blitz. So you can look me up on Facebook, Instagram, coming soon, and YouTube. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.